whereas previous assassins just did stab this assassin with bludgeons and he beats up and he breaks arms and legs. Because he's stronger he can lift characters up so we put in a lot of wrestling moves in there as well. We when we started working on him, it was like the previous assassins, but they were kind of smaller guys in lots of armor. And the more we worked with Connor, we wanted to make him heavier and stronger. We found that we kept working with the silhouette to make him good from all angles. If you don't have a good silhouette on a character, then the animation just will never look good. And we kept stripping things away and found out that he became bulkier and bulkier. So he's a lot stronger than the previous assassins. And that really informed a lot of the way he jumps. So he uses a lot of effort. He's no longer like just gracefully sailing through the sky like a swan. Connor has a lot of his ancestry's strength from the Mohawks. He's strong, he's agile, he's able to run in the wood very quickly. It's really his nature, that's really his home. We had so many different versions of Connor and he started off really slim and then we bulked him up by adding fur and cloaks and all these things. Instead of this thin, lean assassin, like he fills out his coat. He's just a warrior in every sense. When he wants, the ground shakes. And when he fights, you know, people are getting knocked left, right, and center. He's very brutal. You know, there has to be some sort of disagreements at some point. So how do you guys resolve those when you have so many creative voices, you know? And the only truth is what has been said, right? Yeah. So that, that's one of the rules, actually. If it's a, it has been said somewhere, then it's truth, period. And so this is the reality of AC now and now and uh, for the future, you know? So let's start build upon that, on that, and not discuss it. Strongest of the three, I believe, is... Connor Kenway. Not only is he the tallest assassin, but his animations and ability to take down entire armies on his lonesome, and even the entire Templar order on his lonesome is beyond impressive and speaks volume to his physical strength. Seriously, I don't know why anyone would want to fight Connor. It doesn't even matter if he's fatally wounded, he'll still take you out in seconds. So congratulations, Connor, on your title of strongest assassin. First thing to really talk about is Connor. Connor is a monster. He's the tallest, the thickest, the heaviest and the overall strongest assassin we've ever gotten. His mentality is also extremely wise, but at the same time, extremely rogue. He just wants to get shit done, does not care what the consequences are as long as he can get his target out of the way. But he is wise in the aspect of he wants freedom and he kind of looks at things in a gray area, which I think is a very smart perspective. Connor himself is a dual wielding specialist. He's always using two weapons at the same time. It allows for a beautiful animation. It also allows for more fluidity. We wanted Connor to be a dual handed specialist. So basically he's ambidextrous. He can fight with both hands. He is battle driven. He's brutality. And he's the type of assassin who comes up and kills without question or hesitation. The soldiers were not really able to go up against Connor. Connor's a killing machine. He's a ninja in a tank with a wolverine in there. If George Washington would have had Connor on his team, he wouldn't have needed many other people. Faster, more fluid, more dynamic. Uh, his fighting style is really rough and ready, right? He's, he's kind of a brawler. Right? He's gonna get in there and, and just mess people up really fast. You know, we were taking some of the evolutions in the fight system that we had done with Brotherhood and Revelations and extending them even further and, and uh, you know, making sure that you could have a, a really fast, elegant, quick fight, uh, but you would all to start on a new style of fighting that is much more close and aggressive. His favorite weapon is the tomahawk. Obviously, super deadly in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Close quarters flow of the combat that's happening between the punches, the kicks, and everything else is indicative of what happens in the real world. I'm very impressed by the moves that they do. It's cool to see push kicks and axe kicks and different sort of takedowns that are done correctly and very believable. It's fast, it's fluid, and you go through these guys like butter. 
We wanted the combat in AC3 to be more brutal than it was before. We wanted it to be rougher. I think any time you have a war setting, it is by definition a little more brutal. And we also felt that the setting itself was a little dirtier. You know what I mean? Like lots of the story of the American Revolution is the story of people versus the elements or people versus armies or people versus hunger. And we wanted that to come through even in the fighting style. Something we really wanted to emphasize was, was the sheer brutality of combat in the period. We've all seen the paintings of the revolution. Death is glorified, death is angelic, but it wasn't that way on the battlefield. It was a brutal conflict. The Revolutionary War was an incredibly brutal experience. This is something you just don't really hear about in the history books and something we wanted to bring to life in the game. They would shoot and then they would march and that hand-to-hand -hand combat was really brutal. And whether it's people using a bayonet affixed on the end of a musket, a small hatchet, this is a kind of killing that is very mano a mano. I thought it wasn't awesome enough. So we went really brutal and it wasn't just throwing in blood. Did Rodrigo manage to hurt you? Barely. My armor blunted his attack.
I trained in running, in climbing, in fighting, in falling. And for every lesson that concerned the body, there were two that concerned the mind. Language, philosophy, logic, the arts. Achilles taught most often of the assassins and Templars, their structures, origins, and purpose. Centuries of history condensed into a few short days. Time passed quickly after that. My days a blur of study, training, and work. What little free time Achilles allowed me was spent learning about the Templars, about Charles Lee and my father.
enough to clear your head. Ready to talk? What about now? <laughs> 